Hello everyone. Welcome back to this uh, lectures on data communication. And uh, in this video, we are going to start our discussion on module two. In this module, we are going to learn the following concepts. Line coding, then pulse code modulation, then we will discuss digital to analog conversion techniques. Then we are, also, we are going to talk about the uh, effective bandwidth utilization methods like multiplexing, and spread spectrum. Finally, we are also going to discuss and compare circuit switching versus packet switching. So these are the topics that we are going to understand and uh, uh, do some examples, exercises to understand the topic better. So in this lecture of module two, so this is the first lecture of module two, we are going to discuss about line coding or it is known as digital to digital conversion. Right? So when we are going to discuss on the various techniques of line coding. So, we are going to talk about the various line coding techniques. Right? In this, what we are going to learn is at the end of this chapter, we will be given with a series of zeros and ones. This is the binary data that is generated by a computer. And we need to convert that to the digital signal file, right? So this is what we are going to do. What I mean to say is, okay, let me divide that into small time slots, right? So we are going to convert these bits to waveforms, right? It means that I'm going to, we are going to represent these bits to some electrical signal. So I'm going to write this one as with plus V volts, like five volts or something like that. And zero, I will write it as zero volts, right? So we have one, zero, and there is again a zero. Now we have a one, and then again a zero. Now this is one simple method what we have. Okay, so we are able to convert the bit into the electrical signals. So digital to digital conversion. Now this method has some 
drawbacks. Some advantages are there, some disadvantages are also there with respect to some of the characteristics of the line. Right? So a digital machine is generating the zeros and ones, and we will convert that to electrical signal that will be received at the other end. Okay, so this is what we are going to learn in this and we will see uh, what are the various characteristics, the uh, advantages and disadvantages of such coding techniques. Right, so what are the characteristics? So let's first take the first characteristics, which are we call it as signal element. signal element versus data element. Right? So let's take with this the first characteristics. What it says is, now if we take this example that we have written here, we have one data element. This is called as the data element. Let me write it as the E. And each of these data element has one signal element, right? So this we call it as signal element. Okay. So here, what I can observe is the number of data elements and the number of signal element are same. So let's call this the ratio as R, which is the number of the data, the number of data elements to the number of signal elements. Okay, in this case, we have this as one. Now, if I take the another example, instead of having uh, one signal element, I can also have multiple signal elements like this. For one, I'm using two signal elements. For zero, I will have a different code. So here I'm again having a different code and one as E and again I'm having a zero. We will understand this as the class proceeds. Okay, so let's uh, don't get uh, bothered much about here. So I am representing Right. So in this case, I am representing two signal elements for one bit, one here and another here. Similarly, you can see for this also, I'm having one here and one more signal element here. Right. So instead of just using one uh, level, I'm having two voltages here. Right. So in this case, now my this value r value will be one by two, right? So those are the first characteristics. I can have multiple signal elements to more than one signal element to one, or I can use multiple data elements in one signal, right? So we do can have something like we can have two data elements like here for this. One zero, I'm using one data element. Since I'm seeing zero one here, I will be having a different data. So I'm using two data elements, right, in one signal. So the ratio what we see now here is two by one, right? So this is the first characteristics of our line. So we can use more than one uh, data and signal. The second characteristic is, now the information is with respect to bits, like if what I see here is, I'm having five bits per second, right? Five bits per second. Whereas in this case, I'm having 10 signal elements per second. So, the second characteristic will be 
the data rate versus signal versus signal rate. This is the second characteristic. Right? So if I call the signal rate as S and the data rate as N, and if I'm using certain value of R, then we can represent the signal element as, or the signal rate as N by R. Right, so here I'm having five bits per second. Okay, and uh, in this case, in the first case, my R is one. So we will be having, uh, we will be having, uh, uh, what do you call it? The same five bits per second, right? So if I take the case of the green colored one, where I'm using two signal elements, so if I substitute the value of R here as one by two, then, okay, for the first case, my R is one. So then S is equal to N. But in the second case, when my R is two, I'll be having this value as two times of N. So the baud rate or the, this is also called as a baud rate, is twice in this case, in this case, the symbol rate is twice the, the data. So here I, we can, this is called as a, a signal rate or symbol rate or the bird. Okay, so we are representing the bit one using two symbols. So this is the second characteristic. The third characteristic is the bandwidth that you can observe here. Right, so it is the bandwidth. Right, so the bandwidth, we can relate it like this, right? So this is the same, it is N by N into one by R or one N by R, right? So we are having the same relationship, number of the data or the signal elements that we are transfer. So this is multiplied with some constant, right? Some, some channel rate, uh, some constant uh, we are going to define uh, that is between 0 to 1 to tell about the bandwidth of the signal. So the fourth characteristic is the baseline Right. So if we see here, if I let that this is my baseline. Okay, so we call this as a baseline. Right. Here my baseline is somewhere comes to this zero also. Right. So what do we see here? What is baseline? Is this this we call it as a baseline. And the continuous zeros and ones will confuse the decoder with the baseline. So that is called baseline wandering. It, it, it is moving from, it is moving with respect to uh, its baseline. In this case, it is very difficult to, uh, you know, separate the baseline and the uh, zero day. That's not the case here. So we will also look at what is the baseline wandering of the signal. And another characteristics we will be uh, using to compare is the DC component. Right? So there are no variations. So the, uh, the DC component will contribute in uh, the baseline wandering also. It will take some, uh, uh, what actually it means is the here the variations is not there much when you compare it to here. So there is uh, almost no DC component uh, present here, but uh, there is some amount of DC component in the data. So we are going to compare the performance of each of the line coding methods using the DC component also. The sixth characteristics of is it is the self-synchronization. Right? 
what actually it means is see we are transmitting these waveforms right at the at the uh, receiver side these two signals must be exactly synchronized so that the uh, same kind of digital data can be recovered so the various techniques need to be verified for the capacity of for its capability of synchronizing so we will also take the uh, i mean we will include this characteristics which is called synchronization what it means is okay what the, the we are we are transmitting a signal right right so if these two are not properly synchronized then we might get it to be something wrong right so we will be uh, receiving some other bit pattern at that time so self synchronization is another uh, uh, thing that we have to see we will also compare it using with the, the built in error manager built in error detection so how the line coding techniques uh, should have some uh, the capabilities uh, in the built in capabilities to detect the error right if there is a change uh, from 0 to 1 if this waveform get changed uh, from instead of 0 if i am receiving 1 right so the line coding should be immune to such kind of errors also the eighth characteristic is immunity to noise okay immunity to noise okay so this uh, uh where from what we see uh, the noise affects their bandwidth right? so if there is a uh, noise that might change 0 to 1 or 1 to 0 so if most of the information is packed around the magnitude then the noise will definitely be packed so some line coding techniques are developed where we can have immunity to noise and also interference right and the last characteristics that we are going to look is the complexity fine now the complexity of the algorithm so all the line coding techniques that we are going to discuss in this uh, uh, section we are going to compare them with respect to the signal element and the data element it means how many bits are there in signals and uh, uh, i mean how many symbols we are going to use what is the bandwidth and the rate then the effect of the baseline wandering so the continuous zeros and continuous ones how they affect the system the presence of the dc component the capabilities of something like self synchronization built in error detection immunity to the noise and finally the complexity of the algorithm in this syllabus we are going to discuss the following techniques we are going to talk about unipolar line coding then in the polar coding techniques we are going to look at nrz non not return to zero and return to zero fine so we will also discuss on uh, manchester theory there are many techniques are there but uh, we are going to look at look upon only these uh, uh, four very basic techniques unipolar nrz rz and manchester theory right so we will take some example like a pattern 1 0 0 1 0 which i took it early earlier and let's see how it in a very simple way we can understand this uh, a uh, concept so i'm going to take a simple example and later uh, and then we will understand this okay so unipolar coding so if i take unipolar coding it means only one voltage level is used for example i can 
code this as plus V volt and zero volt. For zero, I'll write it as zero. For one, I'll use it as a plus one. And for zero, I'll just write it as zero. Now, what is the value of R in this case? So we have one data element and one signal element. So it is one. And what is the bird rate, which is equal to yeah. Okay, the first two characteristics are different. Then comes the other characteristics, that is the uh, baseline wandering, DC component, and self synchronization cases. Now, if I look at the baseline wandering and DC, the presence of continuous zeros, there are only two zeros here. See, what happens in uh, the communication is since these two uh, end devices are separated uh, with some uh, distance, okay, the, uh, observable distance we can see. So the there is some time delay between the sender and the receiver, right? So what uh, the method that is used at the decoder side, at the receiver side, is to see these voltage variations and decode them, right? So that's what the idea is. And uh, when when we observe no variations, the system will assume that there is no data. That's what it means, right? So if I use unipolar coding, you can easily see that the baseline wandering will be a major problem. And this will also, there is also a presence of a good amount of the DC component in this case, which is very difficult for self-synchronization. I cannot, no, we cannot, uh, Synchronize both the devices because the variations is what matters to us at the decoder side. Right? So there are methods to overcome this, which are called as polar methods. Okay, in the polar methods, we have two techniques NRZ and RZ. Okay. So what actually we do in the polar techniques is Instead of using only zero volts and plus V volts, we are going to use two voltages, plus V and minus V. And zero, or sorry, one is represented by this waveform. Right? So falling edge. So there is half of it starts with plus V. And the later half, we are going to use minus one. Whereas zero is represented with inverter. So we are going to invert it. So zero, and then the next half. My diagrams are not the scale here. Okay. Are you getting my point? So for one, I am using this signal. Whereas for zero, I'm using this signal. So this is my one and this is a uh, zero. So in when I'm using one, I'll make the signal to fall from plus V to minus V. And if it is zero, it goes from zero to minus V. So again, we have a zero here. So I'll use a different color to show it. So we are having, uh, just give me a second. So let us represent this with a green and this with a blue. So I'm having a zero. So I'll take it like this. Okay, let's not take this. I'll take a pink. Okay. So here I'm having zero. So again, I'm having a zero. So I'll use this waveform. Now I see one. So my voltage level must change. Again, I see a zero. Fine. So let me just join. So this is my final waveform what I'm going to have. Now, the R value in this case, we are using two signal elements for one. 
is 1 by 2. So my S value is twice the value of my data. So more uh, bandwidth is required, right? So it requires a more bandwidth. The other uh, 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 comparison if you may, see it is having now, it has eliminated the problem of DC component and baseline. We, if even though there are continuous zeros or continuous ones, we can see the observation. So there is a good amount of uh, self-synchronization is also present, but the uh, bandwidth has increased. The requirement for the bandwidth is, uh, is, is, is high, right? So this kind of coding technique is called as Manchester. And it is also a non not written to uh, zero kind of coding. Right? Now there are some other simple techniques for the non-return coding. So in this coding technique, what we can do is, you can use two voltage levels. So let's say plus V. Okay, so we have plus V and minus V, right? So for one volt, for one, I will be using plus V volts. For zero, I will be using minus V volts. So this will continue. So we have one, zero, zero, one, and a zero. Similar like uh, the unipolar coding, but instead of using just V and zero, we are having uh, plus V and minus V. So it means that I'm having a baseline, which is zero. So when there is no data, when there is no data, the receiver will receive it as a zero volts. Right, so we can overcome the problem of self synchronization and also uh, the continuous zeros and ones is to some extent uh, reduced. So, if I have continuous zeros and ones, then there will be a continuous uh, digital signal. So, so, that digital signal problem will be here continued. That's not the case with uh, our uh, Manchester. Code. So, if I take this line coding technique, I'll be having R as, again, one data and one signal, right? So we'll be having one and a sequence here. Fine. There is one more technique uh, what we have. So which is called, this, this is called as NR, Z, uh, L. There is one more technique. It's called inverted, NRZ inverted. Whenever we see one, there will be a transition. That's how it works. So whenever we are having a one, we are going to see a transition or else there will be no transition. Let's see how it works. So let us assume that we start with one as a plus one. The next bit is zero. So whenever I see a zero, there will be no transitions. So there will be no, since I'm assuming, I'll, I'll mark this as a small circle here. We don't have any transition. Now I see a one. So here I'm going to see a transition. Okay, so we have a zero here. There will be no transition, right? So this is, this using is two voltage levels, plus V and minus V. And I'll repeat this, okay? Whenever I'm having a zero here, there will be no transition. We'll be staying in the same state. That is with a plus V as in our example. And when I see one, there will be transition. It's what we can see here, right? So it has uh, changed its state from plus V to minus V. So again, there is a zero. Uh, so it is having the all the similar characteristics and advantages as what we see with the uh, uh, the NRZ, right? Uh, what is the uh, advantage that we are going to get? So uh, this uh, is similar like NRZ, but the problem of DC component will continue in this case. 
right? So there is one more technique called as a return to zero technique. Okay, so let me take it these numbers back. So we have one, zero, zero, one, and a zero. Okay, so let me draw this. Return to zero refers, like so far one, we are going to use a waveform like this. Right? No, sorry. Let's not do like this. For one, I'm going to use a waveform So this is my zero volt, this is my plus V, and this is my minus V. Whereas for zero, we are going to use such waveform. So this is my zero volts, minus V, and plus V. Right? So if I if, if you take this example, let's note them this as zero volts, plus V volts, and minus V. So we are going to start with half part with the one and then the remaining half part with the zero and then with the minus v volts. Okay. Now we have zero here. So to take this zero, I'm going to do like this. And again, I'm having a zero. Right? So this voltage transition, what we can observe is that this looks like this. And again, I see a one. So I'll be having like this. And again, I'm having a zero. Right? So this is how the RZ line coding will happen. In this also, we can see that we have one data element and we have two signal elements. So my R is again going to be remained as one by two, right? But this algorithm of this technique is uh, complex. And uh, uh, here we see that uh, uh, the bandwidth requirement is Similarly, the Manchester coding. Right? So, this is uh, what we are going to discuss in this chapter. So, let me take uh, let us take any example. Okay, so the example should be more on like given a digital pattern we need to plot it. So let's, you take any digital pattern, something like this, one, zero, 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 one, one, zero, and try to plot uh, uh, the, uh, the line coding schemes to understand it. So that's it, we'll end this uh, class here now. And in the next class, uh, we are going to discuss on pulse code modulation that is uh, called as analog to digital conversion. So, thank you very much.